New this morning, the Russian capital getting a firsthand sense of war after an alleged drone attack. Here you see a plume of smoke rising. And take a look at this. You can actually see a drone flying over the city as a man points out of his window. And here, what appears to be a fragment of a downed drone. Russian state media says two people were injured in Moscow and three residential buildings were damaged in the attack. Russian military officials blame Ukraine for this. Something, of course, Ukraine denies. The attack, though, coming just hours after yet another aerial assault on Kyiv. Ukrainian officials say one woman was killed, 13 people hurt. There have been 17 attacks on Kyiv so far just this month, ahead of that planned counteroffensive we've been talking so much about. Officials also just releasing this body camera video of police responding to one of those attacks. It gives you a real time look at the daily reality of war here as officers are out there to help injured civilians. Let's bring in now CNN's Fred Pleitkin, who's live in eastern Ukraine for us this morning. Uh, so first, Fred, what more are we hearing about this attack on Moscow? Hi there, Poppy. Well, certainly uh, the Russians are, are pretty shaken by this attack that happened there uh, on Moscow. And one of the things that they're obviously doing, as you've noticed, is they've blamed, as they put it, the Kiev regime, obviously blaming the Ukrainians. Some of that footage uh, that came out uh, of uh, Russia certainly seemed to be pretty dramatic with that person pointing at that drone. Now, the Russians say that all of the UAVs, as they put it, the drones that were sent towards Moscow, were put out of commission. They say that several were taken down using electronic countermeasures, which brought them off course, and then they crashed. But they also said that in five cases, they needed to activate their air defenses and shoot them down with short-range air defense systems called the Pantsir uh, air defense system. Nevertheless, there have been several Russian politicians who have come out and said, look, we believe this could be our new reality. This could be the case because of the ongoing war in Ukraine, that it can also come to Moscow. Uh, obviously, a lot of residents in that city pretty shaken as well. This happened in the early morning hours of today and definitely not something the Russians have seen before as this uh, war has been going on, guys. Can you tell us more about the strikes overnight in Kyiv, Fred? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually at the scene of one of the strikes uh, here that happened in Kiev overnight. And I can tell you, we, we were actually in, in Kiev. We're, we're not in eastern Ukraine. Um, and the night was definitely not calm. I mean, it was over several hours that we heard drones in the air the entire time. It's those Iranian-made Shahed drones where you can see, hear the engine howling the entire time. And then you can also hear uh, the sound of the machine gun fire as the Ukrainians are trying to take them down. Where we are right now, you can see substantial damage after one of these drones impacted here. You can see the clean up is already going on. But I want to just ask uh, our, our cameraman, Will Bonnet, he's going to pan up right now, and you can see that it actually impacted up there in the first, in the top couple of floors of that building. Now, that is something that is absolutely significant, guys, because despite the fact that the uh, Russians shot dozens of drones once again or sent them at the capital, Kiev, the Ukrainians say they managed to take most of the drones down. Now, what you're seeing up there, the Ukrainians are saying is actually damaged from a drone that was down and debris then hit this building and caused that explosion that you saw up there. Unfortunately, in this building, one woman was killed. I was able to speak to Kiev's mayor about this right here a couple of minutes ago. Here's what he said. Actually, in May, we have uh, a lot of attacks uh, to our uh, city, not just uh, to capital of Ukraine, also in other cities, and a lot of people killed. Kiev Mayor Vitaly Klitschko, of course, former box champ as well. He was on the scene here very early on. And, of course, not a quiet night here at all. And, you know, this is the third major missile and drone attack that we've had here in the city in the past, I'd say, 30 to 36 hours, some of them with drones and cruise missiles, some of them also with ballistic missiles. So right now, the Ukrainian capital really feeling, and a lot of people here obviously showing a lot of resilience, guys. Fred Plekton, live for us in Kiev. Thank you very much. Well, all of this comes as President Zelensky now says he's made a decision on the timing of Ukraine's counteroffensive. The commander-in-chief and the commanders of the operational directions reported to the staff not only the supply of ammunition, not only the training of new brigades, not only our tactics, but also the timing. This is what is most important. The timing of how we will move forward. We will. The decisions have been made. Joining us now, CNN military analyst, former member of the Joint Chief of the Joint Staff of the Pentagon, retired Colonel Cedric Layton. Colonel, always good to see you. As we listen to what we heard from President Zelensky in that nightly address, the fact that he says they now have the timing—not mm -hmm. saying what that timing is for obvious reasons. 
but that the timing has been decided. What does that signal to you in terms of where things stand for this counteroffensive? How quickly could it happen? Well, good morning, Erica. It really tells me that they've uh, finalized their plans. They're moving forward in a way that is, you know, quite uh, methodical, uh, and they're doing it in a way that will allow them to uh, move forces where they need to. Now, the one thing that they don't have is strategic surprise, but they do have tactical surprise. They can move forces where they need to. The Russians, of course, are going to be watching them from an intelligence perspective, uh, but they will be able to do some things that will keep the Russians guessing. Uh, but there's clearly a timetable that's been set, and we should be seeing a few things, maybe not like D-Day back in World War II, but we will be seeing a few things that indicate an offensive is going forward. I'm interested in why Zelensky would have said that, that I, you know, we have decided on a time frame, we have one. Why would he say that at all? Why would he make that pronouncement? Poppy, I think it's uh, it's messaging. I think it's also psychological. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to tell the Russian side uh, that uh, we are coming for you. We are going to uh, move you out of our country. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, he's still keeping them guessing, although he's made some pretty emphatic statements here. Uh, he's keeping them guessing as to the timing and the place uh, where this is actually going to occur. And it could even be places uh, in the sense that he could use multiple areas uh, to mount certain types of attacks. We've seen this litany of attacks in Kyiv, but we are also seeing attacks making the way all the way to Moscow. Russian officials, as Fred Pleitkin, Fred Pleitkin excuse me, just said, saying they believe this could be their new reality. How are you reading that this morning? How are you reading those attacks? Yeah, they, these are very interesting because generally what they're using are drones that are actually Soviet-era drones that have been modified by the Ukrainians. Uh, so the Ukrainians are uh, not violating any promises that they've made to uh, the West uh, to, and to the U.S. in particular not to use U.S. or Western-supplied weapons to attack Russia itself, uh, but they're still doing it. And it's not quite, uh, you know, setting Russia ablaze, to borrow a phrase from Churchill. But what they are doing is they are actually moving forward and uh, telling the Russian population that they are at risk of uh, some kind of an attack. It's not uh, as bad or as severe as the attacks on Kyiv, obviously, uh, but it is clearly something that puts people at risk. And it, uh, it, it's a warning. One question in all of this sort of bigger picture, uh, Colonel, is the role of China. And can China mm. be a moderating force at all? They have said as much, but there are real questions about what that would look like and where their alliance would be. The fact that given that the uh, Chinese government is refusing to sit down with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, basically saying, no, you cannot meet with your counterpart part at this security forum happening this week in Singapore reminds me of what Lloyd Austin told Caitlin in their interview months ago after the spy balloon, right, that, the, that basically the Chinese weren't picking up the phone. It does not seem like things have improved since then. How does that factor into what's going on in Russia and Ukraine? Yeah, that's certainly true. Things have not improved. And it seems as if China and Russia are basically in lockstep uh, when it comes to the diplomatic right. aspect of this. And I think what they're, the Chinese are failing to do in this particular case is take advantage of an opportunity to play the role of mediator, or at least seem to be playing the role of mediator. Uh, the very fact that they're not meeting with Secretary Austin is an indication that uh, they are not really interested in being a mediator. They're more interested in supporting Putin, and that's going to limit their effectiveness with Ukraine, and it's going to limit their effectiveness with other countries in the West. Colonel Cedric Layton, always appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you.